like I wish like I can do as I please without being questioned because um, for example I could be like waking up really early or waking up really late and then they'll, my mum would be like seeing me saying why are you awake this early and all that stuff and I have to Do you know much about Islam madam? Do you know much about Islam? I'm sorry? Do you know much about Islam? Some, some, yeah. somewhat. I got to it. So. Uh -huh. Are you Muslim or? Trying to. Uh -huh. Are you are you making a decision soon or? Um, hopefully before Eid. Uh -huh. Eid. Yeah. Uh, has anyone teaching you about Islamic? No, just I'm um, doing it myself. Because mm -hmm. I don't I like people around me. They're not they're not Muslim. So. Yeah. So. Um, Is your family Muslim or not? So, what are the sources are you using it? Um, obviously, I got um, like an English book of the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, so I go through that, and obviously, like the internet does help me out a little bit. You know, like some questions and the and some answers for it. Tell me, uh, it was a very interesting sister. What led you to uh, look into Islam? This is actually interesting. Back then, I was Buddhist. Mm. So, obviously, in Buddhism, you only the religion is basically a way of life. It's how you live and how you process. eight ways, hmm? eight ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't. Really, so you don't really question about a creator. You don't really uh. in, in Buddhism. You really don't. It's just a way of living, how to properly li live. Um, but I always been very curious because. Even, even besides. So you were saying, initially you were looking at the Buddhism. Yeah. And then what happened? Oh, and obviously I was still like, there should be, even with all of this going around, because I I study science, right? And there, there's a lot of um, in science, there's a lot of questions rather than answers, and that's the whole purpose of science. And the way what I'm see, like. Studying science and physics and all that stuff, and it makes me think all of this stuff is so complex, so complex that surely there has to be, has to be some sort of higher being to yeah. create all this stuff. Because, yeah. Yeah. Um, for example, the Earth mm. and um, earthquakes. Mm. It's just it's so complex. For example, because yeah. I did a study. And I'm just thinking, there's no way it could be just plainly coincidence or mm. science. There has to be. It. That's how I see it. Mm. But obviously, a lot of my science friends they are very science, so obviously they, they believe all the facts. But I tell them that most of the facts you see is based on theory, and if the theory can be proven, mm. you, you know that's how science is. Um, and so. And also, actually, science talk about the process but it doesn't talk about the processor mm, what we yeah. are saying is something that science cannot answer yes because yeah. uh, you know like uh -huh. for example if I say oh there is a product I cannot just say oh it's randomly created without a maker yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll never believe that nobody yeah. will ever believe that but the same way how can you believe that universe create itself yeah, yeah as, as you like uh, yeah, yeah. So. you know Allah mentioned in the Quran uh, go and look it up my sister this is in chapter 52 that, uh, surah called Surah Tur, okay. Tur and is on 35 to 37. Allah said, I'm min shayin, I'm So Allah posed few questions here. Allah said, Were they created by nothing or are they the creator of themselves? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, interesting question. That's the same question you had in your mind, you know? And I feel like, you know how in, um, in science you need to question a lot of things, but yeah. I feel like. You know, with everything around, there's just some things you can't question. There's some things you know that you don't need to know. For example, um, I learned about, I did like a side thing of like psychology, how the brain works and how the mind is being influenced and all that stuff. And and I and I see this and I think some, some things, I don't feel like it has to be questioned all the time by science. You know, I feel like it's just, it just happens because 
and, 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 and I'm, I'm glad that you said that. Look, we often, a scientific community doesn't realize that there are limitations of scientific observation as well. There are a lot of limitations within the science as well. Because you cannot examine everything, right? So if you cannot examine everything, then empiricism is out of the way. Then you lead with the logic, which is philosophy you can call it yeah, exactly. so and then how do you come to a conclusion yeah. that of course nobody witnessed the creation of the heavens exactly. and the earth yeah, yeah, yeah. Allah mentioned in the uh, Quran that you did not witness your own creation neither the creation of the heavens and the earth so therefore we would God look instill with your mind reasoning with a logic yeah. that always tells us that this cannot create itself yeah right yeah, so yeah. the creator first instill with you this mind of reasoning the same creator you know, presented you will uh, will present you a religion that you also comprehensible to your mind. You know, yeah, yeah. because your mind is already uh, prepared for to accept it or yeah. embrace it. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's interesting. So now, of course, then your concept of belief came, right? Yeah. Yes. And then, where you are standing now? What's my what now? Where are you standing now? Meaning, oh. so you believe in God? Yeah from disbelieving to believing now, <laughs> yeah. right? Now that transition yeah. taken place, I'm glad. The next step is finding the faith. Yes. And, yeah. and the finding God. Now, tell us about what is your belief in God, meaning how do you view God, meaning what's your definition? Oh, well, that's really hard. Um, but I'm going to give it, but <laughs> you will, you kind of, will kind of agree. How I view God. Oh, mm. um, uh, obviously, I, the way I see or feel about God is that um, God is a higher being mm. and He should be highly respected, you know. Uh, should be worshipped, basically. Yes, yes. Correct. Yes. This is a very fundamental. This is the main, main important. God should be worshipped yes. alone. And I, I personally believe that you shouldn't question because He has. God has good intentions for you. I don't, you don't. Wallahi, you said something very profound. Do you know what? Say it. Something very profound. Allah mentioned in the Quran. You don't ask what God has a plan <laughs> and what he's doing. Allah said, La yus'al amma yaf'al wa hum yus'alu. Mm -hmm. You cannot question Allah, but he will question you. Yeah. Meaning you know it, he will do good for you. Yeah, yeah. Why do you question God's judgment? Mm. Why do you question God's action? Yeah, yeah. And when you asking a question, you do not have the God's ability that you are asking him question yeah. because you are asking a question who someone who is all knowledgeable, who is all powerful, who is all seeing, who is yeah. all all hearing. Yeah. At the same time, you are you are not all knowledgeable, you are not all powerful. You know, you, you do not see everything. So yeah. uh, it's like an um, absurd question. You know, yeah, yeah. so. So coming back, so in Islam, we have uh, a chapter 112. That's four line definition, four line definition. So Allah tells us his name is Allah and his one. Second line, it said Allah is the eternal, meaning he exists all the time and everything else is dependent upon him. So everything else basically are temporal. So apart from God, Allah, everything is temporal, meaning everything has been created and everything will be destroyed okay. so that meaning temporal because god is not created and he is not destroyed and yeah, by definition he is an eternal mm -hmm. now allah said lam yalid wa lam yulad meaning he does that doesn't have a father mm -hmm. neither he has a son mm -hmm. so like in many communities since the dawn of mankind people always worship God with intermediary. So they used to say, oh, the angels, the pagans are. Yeah, right. They used yeah. to say, oh, angels are the daughter of the God. Mm -hmm. The Christians say, Jesus is the son of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what Allah sent in the Quran? That's a, a very unique verse, and I, I find it quite interesting. Yeah. Allah said, how can Allah have a son when he has no wife? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do, you, do you see, so Allah is yeah, yeah. engaging our head into a discussion, look into yeah. that. How can I have a, a, a son when I have no wife? Yeah. Right? And in fact, Allah uh, issued warning. Allah said, So Allah is warning those who say Allah has a son. Yeah. And then the fourth line is the most unique one. 
Allah is saying there is nothing comparable to God. Right. Meaning anything we see in our reality, mm -hmm. in our understanding, there is nothing like God. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of yeah. God in Islam. Yeah. Fully makes sense, yeah? Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, what's it called? In Christianity, you know how you have um, Jesus and, yeah. and uh, it confused me because I thought like, because um, I had um, school where they mm. taught religion, um, they taught you religion, uh, which was mainly Christianity and Islam and they were talking about how the three triangles, like the God, Father, the Son, and they are co-equal and co-eternal. Yeah, or something. And at first I didn't really question because I didn't really care but then I was thinking how how can Jesus how is Christianity saying your mono, uh, monotheistic religion when you it's believe, surely a polytheism here yeah when uh, you believe in three things uh -huh. Jesus son Jesus sorry so the Jesus <laughs> the son, so Jesus the spirit, and, so the father yeah. the son yeah, and, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, spirit. then co-equal and co-eternal yeah, meaning co-equal meaning they are exactly the Jesus is equal to the Father mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is equal to the Father and Son mm -hmm. so how can he be equal because a human yeah. Jesus is a human who depend on the food mm -hmm. God is who is independent who doesn't depend on anything mm -hmm. so clearly like millions of differences between the uh, the Son and the Holy Spirit and Father how can yeah. he be the co-equal yeah. make no sense uh, to me I think yeah, like how you know because you're saying they only one God but if you believe in God, tell me follow. Then why do you have? Why do you believe in the the Son and in the Holy Spirit? Because even because in the story it was saying how Jesus, right, was born from uh, Mary, and I said so. Technically speaking, that's just a human. That's a person. Yeah. But how can how can yeah. God be born? Yeah. Is it how can you have such high worship for a human? Mm -hmm. You know, I I didn't really get that. You, you have a very sound fitra. Fitra meaning something in a disposition that have the intrinsic knowledge that Allah tells us that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that through the innate disposition that intrinsically you know there is only one God anything any polytheism is not right because yeah. Allah did not uh, uh, given this intrinsic knowledge Allah given the intrinsic knowledge of there is only one God yeah. and that's why you know if you read out the Quran have you got you got copy of the Quran right yeah, yeah, English version. so if you look at chapter 3 uh -huh. uh, verse 65 onwards uh -huh. Allah talks about um, Abraham uh -huh. so Judaism and the Christianity right yeah. they started not before Abraham after Abraham because uh -huh. Judaism start after Jacob Okay. And Jacob is the grandson of Abraham. So Abraham can't be Jew. Right, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you see my So uh, yeah. Jacob, Jacob's father is Isaac. Yeah. Isaac's father is Ibrahim, Abraham. Yeah. So, and from Jacob, mm -hmm. Jacob progeny, uh, Judah and the Judaism, they start later on. Yeah. So Abraham can't be a Jew. <laughs> yeah. So, and Jesus comes later after anyway. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus cannot be a Jew, neither a Christian. Yeah. Because Abraham was not a Jew, neither a Christian. Then what was the religion of Abraham? This is very interesting to find out. If we look at Abraham as a person, we find Abraham was a purely monotheistic person, meaning he was believing a pure monotheism that do not worship the star. In, the, in fact, he was condemning his father because his father is doing the polytheism by making idol in his own hand and worshiping him mm -hmm. and he was saying oh father why do you worship yeah. this statue and the stone which mm -hmm. cannot even help himself yeah. so look at the understanding of Abraham mm -hmm. so yeah. the same concept yeah. bring again by who? Muhammad peace be upon yeah. Muhammad peace be upon and that goes in line with our cognitive state yeah. the fitra, the innate nature mm -hmm. that human beings is always gonna worship there is only one God yeah. Now, so you are close to Islam, when are you declaring it? Oh, I think when I know for a fact that, you know, I've strengthened my faith, like, obviously, like, because my family doesn't know, like, it's very, I, I hide it as much as I can, um, luckily, I actually had one friend who uh, bought me, like, this really long, big prayer map, 
but um, it's very. I, I have to hide it because obviously mm. they, especially my mom. She, <laughs> I think my siblings wouldn't care. Like they, they don't mind. But it's my mom. She she comes from a no. traditional um, Christian background. Not Christian. She's a Buddhist. Ah, sorry, Buddhist background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, as in, like, she has traditional views, and she doesn't. Mm. I don't think she would understand like um, how Islam is, or she doesn't. Yeah. She's, she's getting like not old, but she's on her forties, and you know, obviously, she came here, so she doesn't really understand this mm. whole. Like other stuff like religion all that stuff she's just doing what she's been taught mm -hmm. so um, you, you kind of finding a struggle to maintain your faith right no um like i wish like i can do as i please without being questioned because um for example i could be like waking up really early or waking up really late and then though my mom would be like seeing me saying why are you awake this early and all that stuff and i have to keep lying like I just wish I could just tell my mom straight off. Like yeah. I, I'm just I'm just living differently than how she raised me. And, but mm. yeah. I, I can see the struggle that you're going through. Of course, that yeah, yeah. this is a big challenge because maintaining faith. I mean, as a Muslim, I would not fully understand what yeah, you are yeah. going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not in your shoes. Yeah. But I I can see you have a strong faith. But mm -hmm. what I was gonna say yeah, to sister, having the faith in the heart is good. But that needs to be actualized by uttering the statement there is only one God and Muhammad is the messenger of God. Take the step to become a Muslim, declare it through the tongue, and then start worshipping it. Okay. That would be the only advice I would give okay. to you. Because I wanted to like... Would you, li would you like to do it, uh, the, the testimony? Would you like to become a Muslim? Oh, I'm not ready yet. I feel like I'm not. Because no, I'll tell you why. Anything you will do, we do... We have to have a checklist. Right. In order to be a Muslim, we need must have a checklist. So you believe in God. Yeah. You believe in uh, angel. Mm -hmm. You believe in prophet. Mm -hmm. You believe in the books God revealed to their prophets, to his prophets. You believe in the day of judgment. And you believe in the predestination. Mm -hmm. If you, t you have to tick all the boxes, do you know what that means? What? <laughs> You means you already a Muslim by belief. Then, then the transition period follows that you take shahada, meaning officially declare it, and that is a a declaration between you and God, not between anybody else. If you do so, then first thing comes in your plate would be five daily prayers. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to get used to it, like yeah. waking up early and all that stuff. Like, I feel like before I fully yeah. uh, take my shahada, I want to get into mm. the habit. I, I was going to say, sister, one thing. Look, you've done an amazing journey. Your journey is amazing, honestly. I've spoken to many, honestly, but your journey, I find some of the very strong fitras people before, but your journey is amazing and unique, <laughs> honestly. What I was going to say, look, I cannot control my life, yeah. meaning that when we will die, nobody knows. Not a single person on the planet knows when he will or she will die. Mm -hmm. So our life is at risk anytime. Yeah. Now, if we don't make the choice, when the things is totally clear, then I am already at risk. So in order to remove the risk, take the steps and then build upon it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's very easy. Two statements. Shall I share say the second one or the first one first? The first one. First one. Yeah. There is only one God. <laughs> yeah. And the second one is Muhammad is a messenger of God. You say this thing, you officially become Muslim. Yeah. Then your journey starts. And God forbid, if something happens, imagine look, if I consider my faith journey based on my family, when I die. Do you think they are going with me in my grave? That's, that was the one thing that I was scared of, is that exactly. because my, my mom and my, my siblings are not... No, they, they, exactly. They will not understand. And when you go to the grave, you go grave alone. Yeah. They will bury you and they will leave. They will not say, oh, let me get a pillow and I'll stay with you. No, that's not happening. So that's why whenever we make that decision, we may have to make decision our own consciousness 
and uh, the knowledge that God given us and whatever research we made. Yeah. That's why I'm asking sister, make the declaration. You don't have to expose it to your family. And then you can grow into your deen, in your religion. Has anyone made this official declaration to you to become a Muslim? Um, oh, no, my colleague, she, she was like encouraging me to, like, she was like, Oh, like she's encouraging me to take my child off, but I was like, <laughs> oh, obviously. Um, and then I heard that um, for a woman, she has to go to an imam. And like no, not life. necessarily, not oh. necessarily, not necessarily. But if you go, I'll tell you the benefit is you can go and get a certificate where the certificate will act like a passport okay. you know yeah uh, and then you can allow so if you wanted to go Saudi for Umrah or Hajj then when you submit your passport with this uh, certificate Shahada certificate then uh, the, the embassy will know you're a Muslim and they will give yeah. you visa yeah. but this is a formality but I'm saying we have to do Shahada for our salvation right if you do it now at least you know you're secure and then you can go and mosque and do the official one because yeah. when anyone converting to islam or reverting sorry reverting to islam someone must be aware of the fact that we cannot control our life meaning that death can approach to us in any time in any moment yeah. but we don't want to leave the earth where i'm surprised where oh i i would be regretful or why didn't i do that yeah. So that's why I say, if you think, no, you want to take it, you feel it, you can recite, I'll, I'll say, you recite with me, and then slowly, slowly you go and do the rest of the stuff. Would you want to do that? Um, I still, uh, I think I would prefer it with like, um, is it still possible? Like Yes, you can, you can. No. First of all, you already declaration, your declaration must be from your heart, then you utter it, and then you act upon it. So when you get the certificate, then of, this is the officially, you know, someone has to be there, right? So like I said, this is a different process. Yeah. The one process for salvation, right? Imagine if you do the salvation declaration now, at least you know that you done the, your part. You done your part yeah. and you are safe. Because yeah. yeah. you have like that belief in, inside of your heart but it was not verbalized or you have not committed to it right so the faith is hidden it needs to be alive and make it more activate activate i would yeah. say activate you know the alarm activation <laughs> yeah. alarm is there but it's not activated right yeah. it's not giving a signal so yeah. i would say sister if you would ask me i would say take it and then officially you can take it with the imam so yeah. at least you know you are in safe yeah on in consideration that we do not know what will happen yeah let alone one hour we don't even know what will happen in the next five minutes yeah. so that would be my suggestion to you yeah. uh it's completely up to you because i've shared you the both yeah and, yeah yeah That's you know yeah. um, what would be the contention now if your contention is because of my family, what they say, you can put it aside because they are not yeah. going to your grave. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I think um, I'll ask uh, my female colleague yes. to, to be my witness mm -hmm. um, because I, I don't know, I that's feel, fine, I feel no. more comfortable with a woman. That's fine, know, that's fine, that, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, you have every right and wish. And what I would say, sister, it was amazing to have a chat with you and yeah it was great I, to have a chat with you it, too you know it is it's a lot to uncover and these journeys actually has a lot of learning for you and a transition from buddhism mm -hmm. to agnosticism yeah. from agnosticism to islam mm -hmm. you know may allah bless your journey you know i i make dua for you that may allah aid your journey and make rest of the things easy meaning once you become muslim you will see there are challenges in maintaining um, prayer and yeah. you know early in the morning wake up so the routine you will find different routine that you are accustomed with before so 
I think first and foremost things is to maintain the prayer. Mm -hmm. This should be like the main step yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. Once you establish prayer, then you know you can slowly yeah. develop on other things. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Let's, let's say the time you can't do the prayer, let's say because of work. Yeah. You, um, yeah, let's say you miss uh, evening because you work really late. So then you come home. Do you have to do? You, do you have to do all the prayers you missed? Yeah. And also do the new one that's coming. Basically. Yeah. So okay. basically, this is called uh, uh, missed prayer. So you can do it later on. Yeah. But nowadays, everywhere we work, we'll have facilities, yeah. and our prayer is not like 20 minutes long. It's five to 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So we don't have that excuse. We yeah. can find a space yeah, somewhere yeah. in our office place, and nobody would say no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone says, oh, five minutes, you know, I need to take a break for five minutes. We, we take ten minutes coffee break, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. In the meantime, you can squeeze your prayer. Yeah. So, I don't think we need to um, miss the Salah. In. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, and the, uh, Allah mentioned that in... Allah said that uh, it, it is a characteristic of believer to pray on time. Yeah. Because uh, some people tell me that they had to miss prayer because of something, and then yeah, to of course it yeah. happened. Of yeah, course yeah. happened. Sometimes it can happen, mm -hmm. but our idea is to straight away cover yeah. the missed salah, mm -hmm. yeah. because Allah will ask on the day of judgment. You know, the first question is about salah. <laughs> Allah will say? ask. Allah will ask. You know, the angel are record. Angel will record everything that we do, yeah. and Allah will ask about your salah. Mm -hmm. So, even if we have any missed salah, we must cover it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's important for a Muslim to we should engage in more in salah mm -hmm. to develop ourselves as a Muslim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because look, as Allah said, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Mm -hmm. That indeed the salah will stay, will will prevent you from doing bad stuff, fawahish, yeah. something immoral stuff, unethical stuff. Yeah. So salah is like of a, our spiritual and physical training. Yeah. Like every time you read uh, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim in Surah Fatiha, there is a one chapter we read in every unit of the prayer mm -hmm. where we say it's a seven line one. So mm -hmm. we repeat this at least 17 times a day. Okay. And we say Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, meaning guide us to the straight path. So I'm constantly making an oath with who? Allah, that yeah. Allah, please allow me to stay on the path that you showed to your prophets and messengers. Yeah. So the salah is kind of practice. Practice. Five daily practice so that in between time we can act up on the oath that we made. Yeah. If I say Allah, allow me to stay on the straight path and then you go and buy a a, a bottle of wine mm -hmm. that means you made the false promise yeah, so we muslim yeah, yeah. we must muslim we must muslim must follow yeah. what allah commanded us yeah. and what type of muslim we will be if we don't follow the command of god so if you can develop the salah this is the uh, this is the most important thing after converting uh, reverting to islam the most important thing is the salah and if you can develop your salah, then you know, inshallah, you know, it's it's easier for you to stay yeah. on the path, you know, because uh, you know, salah is something uh, will keep you in check with Allah, yeah. because it's a direct relationship with Allah, because you will always connected with Allah. When it's Allahu Akbar, you are saying He is great; mm -hmm. nothing else is great. Yeah. So this is something, you know, subhanallah, that will, you will re start realizing when you start worshipping, you know, fully, yeah. prostrating your, when you put your head to the floor, wallahi, you will feel the world of good, mm -hmm. because you will feel now you are releasing the obligation, that what you've been created for, and Allah created us to worship Him. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, then? it does, yeah. 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 So, I mean, uh, subhanAllah, I mean, Allah aid your journey because yes. there's, you have a very unique uh, 
journey and may Allah aid you in your journey. I will share you a contact details of a sister who runs a circle where you can go and learn learn about it. So let me get my you can take a picture of that circle. So this is um, this circle run in uh, in the Wachapel Mosque. This is the one. Yeah, 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 take a picture. And I can give you a uh, sister number. You can, uh, her name is, this is her name and number. And she run the circle. So if you just message her, that look, so you will find uh, like-minded sisters are there in the circle who so embraced it and some of them are looking to it they all can you know you can get all your support and information yeah. from there mm -hmm. so it's a as a big group of sister there they run the circle yeah. and i think it's better sister with the sister group yeah. you know you'll feel comfortable and 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 uh, i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah you know allah have uh, you know uh, yeah. guided you and inshallah your next journey become easier inshallah yeah, thank you look after yourself thank you, so much. you yeah. too thank you have a nice evening thank you bye wow, yeah. subhanallah uh, she is ready to accept islam but uh, inshallah she will do it by going to the mosque and um, with her friends as well but subhanallah I, I met many before but this is a unique situation so initially she is from a buddhist family then she made the transition to agnosticism from agnosticism to islam her understanding is you know he she was created for a bigger purpose and her fitra was so strong subhanallah al-azim that you know i can f clearly feel that the fitra is not corrupted at all all is remaining is to take the step and following islam so subhanallah those who are watching one thing we are blessed with allah granted us islam and this is the grace of ni'mah we don't appreciate it but when we speak to those non-muslim i mean those brothers in the field of da'wah the they can appreciate how much we are blessed to in islam so you know alhamdulillah for islam alhamdulillah for iman and alhamdulillah to be a muslim you know let's be proud of ourselves that we are muslim so i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made her journey easier i think she will uh, do the shahada soon uh, so yeah please make dua and please make dua for our brothers and sisters in palestine jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum